Joseph. As per the 2020 Uganda Disability Data Landscape, 12.4% of Uganda's population lives with some form of disability, with rural areas accounting for the lion's share. Children aged 6 months to 12 years have been singled out as the most prone to disability, specifically arising from maternal complications and thus being denied chances of acquiring education. There's a lot of stigma uh, and discrimination around disability uh, within Uganda communities. Um, there's a lot of belief that uh, disability is due to witchcraft or presence of a demon or its curses and it's the fault of the mother. So we have a lot of single parents. Uh, the, the mothers or even grandmothers are the main caregiver for the children. Started in 2015 with operations in Fort Porto and Kasese districts, the organization Chaninga Development Center stretched its operations to Bundibujo, Ntoroko, Chenjojo, Bunyanga, and Kamwenge districts. Started off just uh, with a few families locally and it's really grown so fast since then that we now work with more than 3,500 children across seven districts in western Uganda. Tragically, though, this, we realize that this is less than 1% of the children with disabilities in this region that we've uh, reached at this point. So we've got a long way to go. The initiative intends to nature and offer support to both families and children who fall under the disability bracket. However, the charity has encountered many challenges in line with its sole responsibilities and thus appeals to government for support. With e-learning taking center stage in the district and at the organization, the Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Gilth Nabakoba, has paid the cuts visit to it. They have a system of offline content which has everything to do with P5, P6 and P7, meaning that their children are going to be in position to access content maybe which would have been very difficult for them. But what is done in Kampala can also be shared with these people or children with special needs. And to me, it's, it, it's a development. Only that right now it's at primary level and it's an initiative within the region covering a few schools in the region. Minister Judith Nabakoba invites parents and guardians to support these young lads in order to secure their future. The advice I would give to the parents and also to the men to know that these children actually did not plan or invite to be the way they are. They are also children from God and we are all made from the image of God. The most important thing is to do away with stigmatization but also discrimination of these, or, or, of these children. Because at the end of the day, if they are going through the same school, if, you are, if they are doing what a normal child is doing, if they are involved even in farming, cleaning the home, doing household, house, household work, you know, it means that they can also, regardless of their disability, they can also be in position to provide the same services which normal children do. On her three-day tour to Toro, Ms. Nabakova interacted with different personalities, sector administrators, inspected key government projects for benchmarking, among others. Robert Onyango, UBC News, Fort Porter City.